Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about beautiful Titan. And more specifically about this beautiful map that you see on the screen that was recently created by scientists, allowing us to create the most detailed map of Titan to date. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So by now you might be already aware that Titan is the only other body in the solar system where we have officially confirmed actual liquid. And more specifically, lakes. This object here has actual lakes. And although Titan is not actually a planet but a moon of Saturn, nevertheless it possesses a lot of properties that could technically make it a planet, or at least a new type of an object. This is sort of what it looks like compared to Saturn, and if you were to look into the atmosphere of Titan, which we have done using the Cassini uh, mission and also the Huygens probe that landed on Titan, you would discover something that looks like this. This hazy and very very thick atmosphere that's even thicker than the one here on Earth. Scientists have even speculated that if you were to go to Titan and essentially bring a couple of really small wings that you could attach to your own arms, you could fly there, simply because the atmosphere is really thick and the gravity is really low. And this is also one of the most well-studied objects in the solar system, simply because it's the farthest object we've landed on. Here's a simulation of what the actual collision or landing was like, and we do have an actual video that I've discussed uh, previously that shows us what the surface sort of looks like. And interestingly here, these rocks that you see everywhere, they're not really rocks, they're basically just ice uh, chunks, or big chunks of water uh, that was frozen for millions and billions of years. And so it's no surprise that um, Titan is a very exciting place. There are a lot of things here that do resemble planet Earth in a lot of ways, even though it's a lot smaller than Earth. And the fact that it has atmosphere and it has actual liquids on the surface, although not water, it's actually things like ethane and methane, all of this together makes this a very exciting world where we're hoping to find the first ever extraterrestrial life. Which is why the release of this paper that came out in Nature magazine made me really really excited because Titan is basically this one place that I would really love to visit one day. The scientists behind this paper essentially were able to combine all of the data that was collected over the years by the Cassini mission and all of this was then combined into this first ever relatively comprehensive map of Titan with actual features examined in a little bit more detail. Now we did have maps of Titan before and as a matter of fact even Google Maps has this image that you see right here that's represented through the collection of all the data we've received from Cassini, but it's not really that clear what we're looking at here. We even have a somewhat similar map right here in Universe Sandbox that you can examine, and um, some of the features are visible here, but the thing is, it's still quite impossible to tell what's what. What exactly is a lake? What exactly is a mountain range? And what exactly is a simple plane? So this paper does just that. The entire focus of this is to try to summarize where things are and where, I guess, important things are. And interestingly, even though it doesn't really look that detailed, it does provide quite a lot of interesting information, along with certain words that I've never really heard of before. But this, by the way, just means mountains and hills. So first of all, this right here are the lakes. The lakes are in the north but they only cover about 1.5% of the entire surface. And that's really insignificant when you compare it to Earth, where the percentage is closer to about 71. So here, there is practically no liquid. But all of the liquid that is here is in the north. Now you might be wondering why, or you might have already guessed why, it definitely has something to do with the seasons. Because the northern part experiences a lot more summers or technically longer summers because of the orbit of Saturn around the Sun. So due to the elliptical nature of Saturn, the northern part here is, I guess, in some sense slightly warmer than the southern part. And this is a very unusual feature that doesn't seem to exist anywhere else in the solar system. Although there is at least one major lake in the south known as Ontario Lacus, named after the province of Ontario, and the origin of which I've discussed in one of the previous videos. So in that sense, the amount of liquid here is definitely very unusual. At the same time, right here in the um, so-called equatorial area of uh, Titan, there is a lot of really unusual 
dune-like formation which doesn't seem to exist on the polar regions. And this is probably due to the rotation of the planet and the way that all of the stuff gets deposited on the surface. There are also these occasional um, areas known as labyrinth and you can find more of them by going to Google Maps and uh, actually seeing the specific labyrinths that are located on every individual one of them and seeing what they're called and what exactly um, they're named after. But these labyrinths are basically just valleys. Valleys that were formed by rain that essentially carved the ice rock and created these unusual formations. Now on our planet, valleys are usually formed through the interaction with water. Usually rivers carve them or a lot of rain activity as well. And so similar effects are probably causing the valleys on Titan. Which suggests that uh, liquid methane and ethane flows um, occasionally and forms these unusual regions that would be absolutely beautiful to look at one day. But unfortunately, all of the images we have of uh, these features are not really that detailed. So unless we go back there and land an actual probe or a rover, which we are currently planning by the way, we're not unfortunately going to be able to imagine what exactly all of this looks like. Now about 14% of the entire surface is hummocky or basically has hills and mountains, which is quite expected from any object really. And about 17% are these dunes um, which form very likely due to the wind activity on the surface of Titan. And because the Titanian atmosphere is a lot thicker than the one on Earth, it very likely creates a lot more wind activity as well. Although possibly not in terms of the actual speed, but definitely in terms of strength. And so here, I would expect dunes to be pretty much everywhere, which they seem to be. And because they mostly form along the equator, it's also implying that most of the wind activity is along the equator, not so much in the polar regions. And the rest of Titan is basically just plains, which is great news for us because plains are usually the regions where we would like to land different probes. So in terms of landing opportunities, there are quite a lot here. So it's going to be very exciting when we finally launch the next probe to go to Titan. The next probe is actually going to be this. This is the Dragonfly mission and its launch date is currently set for 2026. But you never know, maybe China decides to make it here first and maybe they'll be the first to land on Titan. But unlike previous probes, Dragonfly is going to be a helicopter. And it can totally work here because of the thickness of atmosphere and because of the low um, gravity of the object. Although since using solar panels here will be completely useless, the um, Dragonfly is also going to be equipped with its own RTG or essentially a nuclear reactor. So in a decade or so, it's definitely going to be a really exciting mission to follow. Now, apart from that, there was also another really major discovery and the discovery is that there are not that many craters. And we technically expect the craters to be everywhere because pretty much most of the objects in the solar system have experienced a lot of different collisions. So the absence of craters suggests only one thing, that the surface of Titan is exceptionally active. There are a lot of things going on here and it's very likely that the surface gets renewed very regularly, suggesting that the craters simply disappear with time. But the biggest discovery in this paper is the diversity the amount of different features and the amount of activity that's present on this object. Except for Earth, there is no other object in the solar system that has so much stuff going on that has an actual active liquid cycle and atmospheric conditions that do mimic to some extent planet Earth. There is no other object in the solar system that presents more opportunities for us to discover actual extraterrestrial life and if we ever discover something here it's very likely not going to be that surprising. We've already witnessed quite a lot of signs suggesting that something unusual is going on here especially when it comes to atmospheric circulation. For example unexplained methane clouds that are still not entirely well understood. But until we discover more that's really it. It's a pretty interesting study. It finally summarized and it finally compiled the map of titanium surface and we now know a little bit more about the features present here. On that note, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.